again, this is Moog for the Cavern today. In this, the last of our three-part exploration of the games that Cyan created before Myst, we'll be talking about Spelunks and the Caves of Mr. Sudo, which first appeared in 1991, published by Broderbund Software. Spelunks was the third and final title released by Cyan before Myst. You may recall that in earlier installments we discussed The Manhole and Cosmic Osmo. Spelunks was similar to both of those games, in that it was a simple hypercard-based point-and-click adventure aimed primarily at children. It was similar also in that it appeared originally in black and white, but interestingly, it contained elements of spot color that looked a bit peculiar against the one-bit scenery, but this was again because of the color limitations in hypercard. Later, just as with the manhole and Osmo, an enhanced version of Spelunks appeared, and this new version was beautifully recreated in full color by Joshua Staub. Seriously, the colors in the later version of Spelunks are just gorgeous, even if there are only 256 of them. One of the main criticisms of Spelunks when it first appeared was that the game seemed very short, with only a few activities. And as true as this may be, it leads to one of the most interesting aspects of Spelunks. Interesting to Uru fans, at least. Spelunks, as its full title implies, was set in a little cave system. So, for starters, you have the cave idea that we later found in Uru. The game opens with an elevator ride. Once the elevator reached the tunnels below, you could follow those tunnels to any of three rooms, each room containing a different group of activities. Yes, there were only three rooms, but Cyan's original intent, and here's the Uru connection, was to follow up that initial release by periodically creating new chambers that Spelunks fans could add to the game in the future. Not only could you rearrange the initial three rooms in Spelunks via the use of a machine called the Spelunks Builder, the caves were designed to be expandable. It's fascinating to see how Spelunks presaged Uru Live in that regard, with its concept of continually updated content. In the case of Spelunks, it was never made clear how those new rooms were to be delivered. The internet was in its infancy at the time, so downloads would seem remote. Perhaps Cyan envisioned purchasing the new content via mail order or off the shelf, but alas, the original three rooms were all we ever saw of Spelunks. I wish I'd thought to ask Josh Staub about this in more detail during our interview, because the idea of Spelunks really was quite intriguing. As for the activities themselves, they differed from the previous two games by being mostly educational in nature. Spelunks offered playful lessons in science, biology, physics, astronomy, geometry. Well, let me just tell you about some of the games. One of my favorite spots in Spelunks was the Lizard. One of the rooms contained a terrarium, and that terrarium was home to a small lizard that you could feed from a pile of food pellets alongside the tank. There was also a temperature control, and it didn't take too long to learn that warming the tank increased the lizard's metabolism and made him more active. With each pellet, he grew fatter and greener, until he refused the final pellet, which was then gobbled by a worm that popped out of the sand at the bottom of the tank. There were also two activities that illustrated the speed of sound. In the one, you stood on a balcony in a deep cavern chamber and dropped a pebble into the water far below. A graph at the handrail would time the drop, showing how the pebble accelerated as it fell, and then it would time the delay before you heard the sound. In the other puzzle, you could enter a distance in miles or kilometers, and then look into a view scope to see a lightning flash at the specified distance, with a timer then counting the seconds until the sound of thunder arrived. In another activity, you could charge a fluorescent lamp with different gases, and then power it up to note the different colors. Climbing a ladder to an opening, you could use a telescope to view the wonders of the heavens, locating those features through the use of Cartesian coordinates on a panel alongside the scope. In another hint of what was to come in the Myst games, Spelunks was the first of the Cyan titles to present a backstory to the adventure, this time by means of a storybook in Professor Spelunks's office. The story was a delightful children's fantasy that I always enjoyed reading to our son when he was little. In the book we learn of Professor Spelunks, a kindly scientist who just happens to be a very dignified teddy bear. He befriends the diminutive Mr. Sudo, a little fellow with a long snout a bit like an anteater, 
and the story involves the assignment given to Mr. Sudo by the professor. The creation of a very special toaster, designed specifically for the final contest in the upcoming Great Games, the game of Yodel Toasters. And by the way, there was a miniature version of Yodel Toasters provided in Spelunks as a game within the game. Not to digress too far, but the game involved ejecting a slice of toast from a toaster, and then sliding the toaster back and forth to catch and reshoot the toast, aiming for a little mountain climber above, dressed in lederhosen. And when he caught the toast, he'd yodel with delight, and you scored points according to the number of tosses. <laughs> the tricky bit was that you only got so many attempts before the toast became overdone and crumbled to cinders. As mentioned, there were several other activities, and while most of them dealt with science, there were some that were just plain fun, such as the picture over Mr. Sudo's desk. Clicking that picture zoomed you in on an interactive scene where you could place a miniature Mr. Sudo anywhere in the picture, explore his house, etc., even sit him at his piano and hear him play. Brief as it was, Spelunks was simply delightful. Cyan chose to commemorate the game in a small way via the spiral notebooks we found in the cavern and ages of Uru. You may recall that each of those notebooks bore the brand name Pseudo. As I've mentioned before, each of these games, the Manhole, Cosmic Osmo, and Spelunks, was great fun on its own. But when seen in light of what was to come later from Cyan, they become all the more fascinating because these games serve to document the growth of Cyan's world-building abilities. When I initially played Myst, I couldn't help but keep in mind that it had been preceded by these other three. Myst became a fascinating blend of the magical exploration of the earlier titles, coupled with a very serious storyline that made it plain that I was in another type of adventure altogether, even if the rocket ship on Myst Island was rather reminiscent of the Osmobile. So thanks for listening. If you'd like to hear the story behind Spelunks, as related in the storybook and the game, I've also recorded a reading of that book, which you can access via our website at www.thecaverntoday.com. Look in the Podcast 13 section. I hope you've enjoyed these retrospectives as much as I've enjoyed putting them together. For The Cavern Today, this is Mowog signing off. <laughs>